This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, fantasy, and thriller film called The Brass Teapot. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Alice and John Macy seem like a happy couple, but they struggle to make ends meet. As John prepares to get out of bed one morning, Alice offers to make breakfast. John, however, reminds her that they have nothing in the fridge. Alice suggests going to her mother's house later to eat dinner, but John remarks that he'd rather starve. Soon, John leaves the house and heads to work on his bicycle. John works as an insurance telemarketer in Laurel Springs. While Alice is a job-seeking college graduate aiming for leadership positions in reputable companies. During a job interview, Alice cites her undergraduate degree to stress that she's fully qualified for her dream job. But the manager notes that the other applicants either have master's degrees or 10 years of experience. While Alice continues looking for jobs at the classifieds, Arnie, their landlord, stops by the house to collect their rent. Alice hands over a check, but she asks Annie not to cash it until the end of the week. Arnie wonders why Alice ended up penniless when she was voted most likely to succeed in high school. When he sees John arrive, he surmises that he must be the reason for Alice's misfortune. Later, Alice checks their bank account online and learns that their money is not enough to pay for their rent. That night, the couple go to a party congratulating their high school friend Peyton for landing a new job. Upon their arrival, they find out that they're underdressed for the occasion. While they stare at Peyton, with envy, Alice notes that she copied her homework seven years ago while spending most of her time fornicating with jocks. John then points out that she just landed her six-figure desk job because of her father's influence. The couple is delighted when they see Chuck and Louise arrive as they're not the only underdressed guests at the party anymore. Later, Louise tells Alice that she's depressed because she failed to get a scholarship and went broke after paying her mother's hospital bills. The unlucky couple spends the rest of the night getting drunk and having fun to forget about their financial troubles. In the morning, Alice and John head to the grocery store to buy some food. On the way, a truck slams into their vehicle as they pass through an intersection. Luckily, no one got hurt. When the police arrive, they discover that someone had sawed off the stop sign. As the men discuss the accident, Alice notices an elderly woman walking out of an antique shop on the other side of the road to take a brass teapot from a drum. Alice gets curious and decides to follow the woman back into the shop. When she gets inside, she sees the woman putting down the teapot on the table. John soon enters the shop to tell her that their car can still run despite the damage. Alice tells him that she wants to stick around to see if they could find something they could present at the upcoming antique roadshow. Alice decides to grab the brass teapot and runs out of the shop while the woman is on the phone. As soon as she gets in the car, she tells John to drive. John doesn't realize that Alice stole something until she shows him the teapot. While trying to secure a job interview, Alice accidentally hurts herself with a curling iron and sees the brass teapot rattling. When she inspects it, she finds $200 inside. When she burns herself with the iron again, she finds more money in the teapot. Alice then continues hurting herself intentionally to get more money. At the telemarketing office, Mr. Tudor, the manager informs John that they're laying off some employees and he's the first to get fired. John objects because he's been there longer than most employees, but Tudor notes that the management didn't decide based on seniority. John soon comes home and finds the house in shambles. When he gets to the bedroom, he sees Alice lying in bed with a head wound. Not long, Alice gets up and assures John that she's all right. Alice learns that John has been fired and tells him not to worry. She then smacks John in the face and shows him the money that materialized inside the teapot. Alice discloses that the teapot gives them money when they get hurt. John thinks that she put the money in the teapot before hitting him. So she empties the teapot and knees him in the groin to prove that there's something magical about the item. Later, John expresses his uneasiness about making money from the teapot, but Alice is determined to use it to pull them out of poverty. In the morning, 
John returns to the antique shop to return the item without Alice's knowledge, but he finds out that it's already closed. John then takes the teapot to the antique roadshow, which is being broadcast on TV. When Dr. Li Ling sees the teapot on TV, he immediately marks its location on the map. The antique dealer tells John that the teapot probably came from the Middle East or ancient China and estimates its value at $5,000. John takes the teapot back home and tells Alice that they can keep using it if they promise to stop before it gets out of control. Alice says she will only use it until they make their first million. The couple soon carries the teapot to different establishments that offer services that involve pain. Alice goes for a Brazilian wax while John visits the dentist. Afterward, they both go to a tattoo shop. The couple manages to accumulate $194,000 after going through all the pain. They can't put the money in the bank because they can't explain to the IRS, so they hide it in their toilet tank. Alice wants to make it into an even $200,000, so they end up spanking each other. When the couple visits Alice's family, they start getting questions about where their money comes from. John then quips that they're selling Alice's eggs to sterile women. Alice's sister, Mary, asks the couple if they plan to have a baby soon, but Alice notes that she's not keen on giving birth. After paying off all their debts, Alice and John make plans to buy what they've always wanted. However, their planning is interrupted when they get a knock on the door. Alice immediately hides the teapot under the pillow while John sees who it is. Jewish brothers Galad and Yol soon barge into the house and beat up John to compel him to give them the teapot. Galad notes that he knows they have it because he saw John with the teapot on the TV. He discloses that their grandmother risked her life to obtain the object. Alice claims that she bought it from the woman for a reasonable price, but Galad points out that his grandmother mentioned that her teapot was missing before she passed away. As they continue beating up John, Alice tells them that they sold the teapot. Yul stresses that they want the money, so Alice grabs all the cash from the teapot while keeping it hidden, and gives the money to the brothers. After some time, John and Alice decide to visit the library to learn about the teapot. Alice finds pages of information about the antique in a book about magical objects and potions, but the one that catches her eye is a drawing depicting the consequences of using it. While John is not looking, Alice tears the page and hides it in her bag. John finds a warning about the consequences of owning the teapot on the remaining pages but he can't find any more details because they are on the torn page. Alice asserts that they couldn't get reliable information from the book because it's really old. So she tells John not to worry and suggests spending some of the money. Soon, John and Alice buy a car and other extravagant items. They also buy a home in a luxurious neighborhood next to Peyton's house. During the housewarming party, Lee rings the doorbell and introduces himself as a member of the Theophysist Society, which has a special interest in antique items. John wants to hear what Lee has to say about the teapot, but Alice fears that Lee might steal it. John tells Lee that they donated the teapot to a museum, but Lee refuses to believe him. He warns the couple that they are in grave danger, but Alice ignores him and slams the door in his face. One night, Arnie visits them to ask them how they can afford their home. When he sees Alice clutching the teapot, Arnie grabs it and runs out of the house. Upon reaching his truck, Arnie throws the teapot on the street and runs over it. The teapot sustains some damage, but it immediately fixes itself before Alice can retrieve it. Later that night, the couple visits Lee in his motel room to learn more about the teapot. Lee reveals that the society has been tracking it down, but it disappeared from a German concentration camp in 1945. Lee warns that the teapot will draw the evil out of its owners and cause great harm. Alice asserts that it won't affect them because they're good, but Lee notes that everyone starts thinking that way. Lee asks them to give him the object, claiming that he will get rid of it. He points out that the teapot can't be destroyed, but he can hide it in a place where no one else can find it. Alice convinces John to keep the teapot because she thinks Lee only wants it for himself. She assures John that things will never get out of control because they're good people. One night, Alice and John wake up to find Galad and Yule breaking into their house to take the money they hid in the bathroom. 
Alice then pushes John out of the bedroom to force him to confront the brothers, but they just scoff at him. Not long, Alice comes out of the bedroom carrying the teapot. The brothers reveal they knew they had the teapot the whole time, but they're not interested in taking it. They note that they just want the money and advise them to get rid of the teapot before it's too late. Galad notes that their grandmother suffered because of it and reveals that she was the one who sawed off the stop sign on the road to cause an accident. Alice starts hitting the brothers with the teapot to prevent them from leaving with the money. John joins the scuffle, but he gets knocked out after slamming into a door. As the brothers attempt to flee, Alice hangs on to the bag of money, but one of the brothers knocks her out. In the morning, Alice castigates John for failing to stop the brothers. Soon after the robbery, John and Alice try making more money by hurting themselves, but only small bills emerge from the teapot. They realize that the object is not producing as much as it used to, so they figured out that they need someone else to hurt them badly. While carrying the teapot in a purse, John approaches an ex-convict in a bar and humps him. The man responds by grabbing his rear, so John slaps him in the face. The man then starts beating him up brutally until he's knocked unconscious on the floor. The next day, Lee stops by the house to warn John that the teapot will soon destroy their lives if they don't get rid of it. One day, Alice finds money in the teapot after a skater trips near her and hurts his leg. Later, she shows the money to John and hints that the teapot also produces money when other people are getting hurt. The couple soon visits different establishments to get close to the people in pain. After watching an MMA fight, they visit a tattoo shop and maternity ward. While trying to find more people in pain, Alice tries to run over a homeless man, but John grabs the wheel to avoid hitting him. John points out that they need to stop using the teapot because they're losing control, but Alice argues that John just couldn't follow through on things he started. Alice laments that he never advanced in his career no matter how hard he works. So John points out that he would have saved more money if he didn't have to support a wife who insists on applying for top positions instead of starting at the bottom. Alice gets upset and gets out of the vehicle with the teapot. When she avoids a car passing by, she notices money coming out of the object and realizes that it also produces cash from emotional pain. More money comes out when she insults John by claiming that she's too good for him. Alice urges John to reveal a secret that could hurt her. So John discloses that he kissed Peyton during a New Year's Eve party, and he still thinks about it when he kisses Alice. The couple continues telling hurtful secrets to each other when they return home. A lot of money comes out of the teapot when Alice reveals that Arnie went down on her before they were married, and she returned the favor. John then goes to Arnie's house and tells his wife, Brandy, what happened between her husband and Alice. When Arnie headbutts John in anger, Alice drops her bag on the ground to help her husband. Arnie notices the teapot in the bag and points out that it should have been destroyed. As he inspects it, he sees the money inside before Alice can take it back. Soon, Alice and John run out of hurtful things to say to each other, so they decide to go to Peyton's house to tell her husband, Ricky, that Peyton killed his dog by leaving him in a hot car. Afterward, John goes to his old workplace to show Mrs. Tudor pictures of her husband having an affair with an intern. The couple tries telling Mary's husband, Joe, that their kid is not really his, but Alice can't go through with it. She ends up confessing to Mary that she's jealous of Mary's family because they find happiness so easily. That night, Alice comes up with a plan for one big score by taking out a pedophile or a drug dealer. They begin digging a grave in the forest, but John eventually stops because he thinks they're going too far. Alice continues digging, so John leaves her and visits Lee to ask for his advice. Lee discloses that they must willingly give the teapot to him because it's the only way to neutralize its power. However, he doesn't think it will happen because he believes it's already too late for them. Lee vows to follow the teapot until he finds an owner who will listen to him. After Alice takes a shower that evening, she sees a ghoulish face when she looks at herself in the mirror. When she gets out of the bathroom, she finds John sitting by the window, clutching the teapot, hinting that he will jump out of the window. John makes Alice promise to stop using it and give it to Lee. Alice asks him to get down from the window and promises to get rid of the teapot right away. 
but John decides to jump to prove to her that he follows through on his decisions. Alice immediately runs down to John, ignoring the money flying out of the teapot. When John regains consciousness, Alice promises him that she'll get rid of the cursed object. That night, Arnie breaks into the house and steals the teapot. Alice decides to let him go and get rid of everything they acquired from the antique, but John notes that they can't let Arnie use it. In the morning, they immediately go to Arnie's house to confront him. No one answers the door, so they try opening it and find out it's locked. Soon after they get inside, Arnie emerges and points a gun at them. John knocks the gun out of his hand when Arnie attempts to shoot Alice. John and Arnie come to blows as Arnie refuses to surrender the teapot. Suddenly, Brandy appears with the teapot and a shotgun. The couple tells Alice and John to get down on the ground, so they comply. As they prepare to shoot them, Galad and Yol storm into the house and ask Arnie to give them the teapot. When they refuse, Galad shoots Arnie in the gut. John and Alice hide behind a couch as Brandy engages the brothers in a shootout. When the gunfight ceases, Alice and John find a lot of money scattered around the house. While the brothers and the couple lie dead on the floor, before long, Alice and John leave the house carrying the teapot and the money that came out of it. They find Lee outside waiting for them, so Alice hands over the teapot to him. Lee reveals that thousands of powerful people have held the object before them, but very few had the strength to let it go. Months later, Alice sends a check for $250,000 to Louise. Meanwhile, John and Alice drive to the border in their old car to raise a family in Mexico. Lee rides a ferry and drops the teapot in the middle of the ocean, where no one will ever find it. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.